Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We're going to do an unboxing today of something I've been trying to get my hands on for quite a while, and the opportunity finally presented itself to acquire It Never Snows by Multiman Publishing, the gamers and designer Dean Essig. So this is, of course, a game about Operation Market Garden, which is a topic of particular interest to me. Um, it is in, what, uh, when was this released? It's the 2012 release. It's still available as of this filming. Um, they say complexity medium, solitaire suitability medium. I would say complexity low. It's a standard combat series game. The entire rulebook is about eight pages. And even the more complicated SCS games add six or eight pages of additional rules on top of that. So we'll see what, exactly what we get here. So let's open her up and see what we get. We are in a um, a three, uh, three inch, that'd be nice. Uh, we're in a two inch box here, which is a little bit unusual for MMP, but this is not a particularly tiny game. Um, map footprint, this thing should have in it five maps and three counter sheets. So, it's not a tiny game. Um, I can comfortably get two counter trays in a box this size, which I believe will not be a problem in this particular case. So we have two dice, which we'll set aside for a moment, while we look at the multi-man publishing little contents card. This should contain one box and a lid, five 22 by 34 inch map sheets, three counter sheets, one SCS series rulebook, one It Never Snows rulebook, four player aid cards, including airdrop planning, allied reinforcement, and two German reinforcement cards, and two dice. Okay, so let's see what we actually get. Make sure all these products come in here. All right, so here is the It Never Snows exclusive rules, it looks like. Uh, this is a 20-page book with tables on the back, um, order of arrivals toward the back, there's a German order of arrival. If you have not seen the definitive film on the subject, um, A Bridge Too Far, by all means you should do that as your homework assignment. Um, looks like we have eight scenarios here, and kind of looks like this is a one-map scenario. This is a two-map scenario, it looks like. It's hard to tell because they're giving you hex rows. There's a uh, looks like there's a fair number of one-map scenarios here, which is kind of good. There's the high watermark start, which is basically just after the... Well, it's like day two, I think. Um, and then the September 18th scenario... And then the Market Garden campaign, which is going to include all five maps and all that. And then the, here's a historical drop zones campaign. Um, this is interesting that this is like not... Because it's number two, right? Because it's the second scenario, you kind of take it to feel like this is the not... This is the optional scenario. Now, in... in um, in GTS Market Garden, it is disastrous to allow free setup of the airdrops. But... Um, I'll see what, what we have here as far as airdrop rules. You know, there might be some restrictions as to where you can put those things. Uh, it does look like that's the case. So we have six pages, really less than that, because the first one's just very basic stuff. Um, so we have roughly six pages of game-specific rules. So total page count on the game, rules-wise, is about 15 pages. So um, it's classic... Uh, hex encounter, I go, you go system with a few wrinkles. Um, it, it's not a completely traditional system, uh, but it is a game system that I think works fairly well, at least for some topics that it has covered. There have been some SCS games that I didn't like. Um, one of them is the biggest game that's been done, Day of Days, which covers D-Day. Um, I won't go into why I didn't like it, but there are multiple reasons. So anyway, um, we have... As I try to extract it from the box, a map A and a counter sheet, one. We have a map B. And then we have a setup card. Okay, so this is an 11 by 17 on quite thick, like, player aid type paper. Um, this gives us the German at start setup and order of arrival. So that's rather nice that that's here. Okay. Uh, here's the series rules. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, here's the third map. Here is another German order of arrival. This is more order of arrival, yeah. So this is turn 3 to 14. Here is a map D. Here's another counter sheet. 
MMPs always had this sort of weird collation system that they use that results in the uh, components being added to the box in what looks to the consumer like a random order, but that's not really true. Um, so here's the allied airdrop and glider points. I believe you set all your airdropping units up on this uh, and then do the drops. So another display. So this is, this is quite space hungry. Another map, I believe is the final map. Okay, and then here's another display, which is the Allied Organizational Chart. So, so we have, this is kind of interesting here. Um, we have the Guards Armor Division. We have, of course, the three Airborne Divisions. Uh, we have the 43rd Infantry. And then we have, here's the Polish uh, Airborne. And we have what looks like the Princess Irene Brigade. And then um, some kind of British... Um, Looks like Tank Brigade, something like that. Maybe not. So I'm not sure. Um, so we don't have what I would consider a, a full order battle for the entire operation. And I think that's because the, the action is sort of channeled. It's going to be impossible for me to show you this. Although I will show you at least the map art. So let's put the <coughs> player aids back in the box. And there's a... Another counter sheet, too. We'll take a look at the counters in a minute. <coughs> so looking at the... Yeah, okay, good. So here's um, the area approaching Eindhoven, and which, of course, is one of the three big bridges that were objectives of the, the, the operation in the first place. Um, this red dash line is some kind of operational boundary, and I believe that the 30 core units can't go outside that boundary. Um, even if they are retreated outside that boundary, they have to spend their first next action to, to go in. Um, there's a like a main highway here, um, so I, I'm not sure how it's going to work. We'll we'll see. I mean, I've I've not the Burt world's biggest market garden uh, games expert, but I've played a couple of them. Um, and I like the scale of this, and I like the fact, and what attracted me to this, and I've wanted it for a while, um, is it seems like a Market Garden game that I can fool with. Um, other Market Garden games I'm not inclined to do that with. So let's look at the series rules, if you haven't seen this. This is version 1.7. There might be a newer version now. I don't know. This is a very mature series. Um, the This rule book is very straightforward. I can vouch for that. Eight pages of rules, one of which is designer's notes, and um, it's 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 black and white, fairly thick paper, fairly well illustrated, um, very easy to digest system. Uh, any SCS game is is going to be a pretty good like starter war game for people who are not experienced war gamers. Uh, this may be less so than some other ones, just because it's kind of big. But um, like something new like Rostov 41 or Iron Curtain, you could certainly uh, make in a a first war game and you'd have no problem with it, um, I think. All right, so counters. Uh, these counters have been criticized for excessive hideousness uh, by certain people in the past. And I have to say uh, that sheet number one here, I mean, they're standard gamers style counters, so they're, they're pretty utilitarian. Um, this first sheet is completely fine. Uh, this gradient sort of thing for the first airborne, uh, is something that can make counters hard to read. I don't see that that is a problem at the moment, at least. Um, second sheet, and I think it's this lurid pink, which I think is the Guards Armored, I think. It sure looks like it's Guards Armored. Um, this is the 43rd Infantry Division, I believe, and then here's that British artillery, Royal Artillery, or something like that formation. Oh. There's a name for them. Uh, but it's probably in the order of battle. So here we have some German units. Um, unless I'm guessing wrong, the gray units are going to be Wehrmacht. The black units will be SS. The light blue will be Luftwaffe. And the dark blue are probably Kriegsmarine. Um, I don't know if the um, SS marching band has a counter in this game. I thought I looked and it didn't. But that was a while ago, and I wouldn't swear to it. So I would want to verify that that's the case. This is a company-level treatment of Market Garden. And most of these, these units are, in fact, company-sized. Um, so, well, I'm not crazy about this pink and question the 
colorblind status of the person that picked it. Um, I, don't, I don't really see any major cause for complaints on it, any of these counters. Um, so what we have then is a large but quite easy to play game about Operation Market Garden. Um, it never snows. And actually, I'm filming this right around the historical anniversary of Market Garden, too. This is being filmed on the 21st of September. Uh, historically, it started on the 18th. So I should have planned this better and had it out for the anniversary. But It Never Snows, Multi-Man Publishing, signed by Dean Essig. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. If you'd like to support Art Wolf Slayer, it would be greatly appreciated. You can share the content around on social media, mention it to your friends and family, or you can click on the Patreon link in the video description. Until next time, thanks again for watching and happy wargaming.